What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up PHP MD or the PHP Mesh Detector for a WordPress project. PHP MD is a static analysis tool for PHP. It helps to identify potential problems, bugs, suboptimal code. It detects issues related to code complexity, unused code, code style violations, and more. It's useful for maintaining code quality and adhering to best practices in PHP development and WordPress theme development. So in this this video I hope you get set up. If you want to support this channel head on over to picksomeweb.com WordPress themes and consider making a purchase of DevWP. With this purchase you'll get all the files, the folders, the documentation pages and what you need to get set up with my years of experience and thousands of hours put into making this theme an efficient and productive and streamlined workflow. After this video, you can take a look at some of my other videos that I've created in the past, especially this super long one. Now this series of videos that I'm creating now is the next iteration of DevWP, but you can see over the years how we've advanced. All right, so this is the official website for PHP Mesh Detector, is phpmd.org, and you can get some information about it here. And then this is the GitHub page where you can learn more about it as well. All right, so let's head on over to VS Code. All right, so if you remember in a previous video where we set up Composer, I gave you the code for all the dependencies we're going to be using within this project. And in that, we do have PHPMD. Then further down, you see we have a Composer script for PHPMD as well. So we do have that installed. But if you don't have it installed yet, what you can do, open up Terminal. I'm going to go to my DevWP folder, but I'm going to use a shortcut. Instead of having to type out the full path, I'll type out CD, W, P, T, and then T. And that'll take me to my Themes folder. And then I'll just do that to get to my DevWP folder. This is an alias that I created in a previous video. I'm going to update it soon so that way you can go directly into this folder itself. But aliases are great because they help to streamline your workflow. Instead of having to type out a full path, you shorten it up to something that makes sense to you. You could set up your own naming conventions and you could quickly navigate your operating system. And this works on both Windows and Mac OS. Notice I'm also using Git Bash for my terminal on Windows. All right, so now what I need to do is create the configuration file. But before that, if you did not install PHPMD with the composer video that we did previously, this is the command you would follow. Composer require dash dash dev and then phpmd forward slash phpmd. And this will bring this dependency into your project. All right, so now what I want to do is create the file phpmd.xml and this will be the configuration file. So I can type out touch phpmd.xml. Hit enter return. And then I'm going to type out another alias of mine. This is just the O letter. And this is an alias for the start command on Windows. And it would be the open command on Mac OS. So I type out O and then I'll just type out phpmd dot and then I'll just tap complete. And since XML files are designated to be opened in VS Code on my system, it opened up right within my editor. All right, so now I'm going to paste in my code here and then I'll explain exactly what it does. X out of the terminal. All right, so this is also an XML file, just like the one we created for SOM. But here we have the description and you see we're excluding some directories, but we have them doubled up here. Why is this? Because we have it set up for Linux or Mac OS, and we also have it set up for Windows, since the file paths are going to be treated differently. Now, we didn't create all these folders yet, and in a future video where we actually do the linting, I'll go over not only the linting process, but we'll also create the various folders. And then you see here we're importing a couple of rule sets the clean code.xml rule set, the design, the unused code rule set. You could also import the controversial rule set, but I have that commented off for now. We have the naming rule set. We're going to exclude the short variable because we're going to be using some shorter variables within our code when it's needed. Obviously, you want your variables to be named in an easy to understand type variable name, but there's going to be times that it just makes sense to use a very short variable. And then we're going to be bringing in the code size.xml rule set and then the excessive method length. All right, so this is our XML file. Take a look at it, copy it. If you get DevWP from pixelweb.com, you'll already have these files already set up for you, but it's always good to type them out just so you get the muscle memory and go through the process of actually building it. All right, so now let's open up our editor. So now if we go to composer.json, you see we have the script over here, phpmd. So if we type out in the actual terminal, composer, phpmd, 
it's going to run this script right here. But I do have an alias for that as well, CLMD. Let me hit enter. And that's an alias that basically does the same thing as this. It just shortens it up for me. Again, saving on keystrokes when you're trying to streamline your workflow. Having a lot of these aliases set up can definitely speed up the process. So if you haven't taken a look at that video, take a look at it. And then you can use the naming conventions that make sense for you. All right, so I finished scanning. And we see that we have some issues over here. Not that many. We have four of them for now. The else expression. Basically, this is saying that we should find another way instead of using else expressions. But this is actually not bad. We don't have that many errors in the default setup of underscores that's just been renamed to DevWP. We haven't added our custom code yet. We haven't really refactored underscores yet. We just did some very basic renaming. So this will change as we proceed with our demonstration of creating a custom theme. But this gives us an idea of where the underscores theme currently stands in terms of any issues it might have. We saw the results from PHP Stan, which had about 52 issues. We saw SOM demonstrated it had 99 issues that needed to be resolved. And this one, it shows that it has four issues that we need to resolve. That's why I like to use various linting tools and static analysis tools to be able to determine what issues need to be resolved within the code. And the reason for that is because if you're just coding away, you just, you're in the flow and you're not really focused on the formatting style of it. If you're not following a specific style guide or the current best practices based on different types of conditionals, if you're more familiar with just using if else, or if you want to use ternary operators, or if you want to use the null coalescence, or just a different style of code, you don't really want to break that flow by starting to slow yourself down and then say, okay, how am I actually formatting this? You just want to get the code into your editor, and then you do a cleanup. So think about it like a rough draft. That's the first iteration of code you're going to write out. It's going to be a rough draft. And then you start cleaning it up and refactoring it when needed. And linting and using these static analysis tools definitely help out with that. All right, so it's always good to commit your code to Git for version control so you can keep track of the changes you're making. So I will use my alias CDWPT to go to the root of this project. I'll type out GS, which stands for Git status. And it shows that I have two untracked files. One of them is from the previous video where I demonstrated how to set up and configure PHP SOM. And then this file over here for phpmd.xml. All right, so I'll use my alias of GA to add it. And then GC for git commit, give myself a message. Now both of those are added. All right, so in this video, I demonstrated how to set up phpmd, the PHP mesh detector to work with your WordPress project. And I showed you how to configure it. Take a look at this code. What I'll probably also do is add this code to my website in a manner that you could just copy and paste it. So I'll leave a link to that in the description area. But if you want to help the channel out also, you can purchase a copy of DevWP. A lot of work has gone into it, thousands of hours and years of work, and your support is greatly appreciated. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or opinions, leave them down below, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.